This book, Dishcloth Diva Knits On, was sent to me by Cooperative Press and is a really great resource if you love using hand-knit dishcloths. And if you have been watching my podcast for any length of time, you know that I love using hand-knit dishcloths. I like to knit dishcloths, not only to use them, but also because they provide instant gratification after a long project. You can sit down, cast on, and within a few hours, you have a finished dishcloth. Deb Buckingham is the author, and she has found a way to create simple patterns that have just enough detail to hold your interest, but easy enough that you can memorize the pattern after just a few rows. What? You're just not into hand-knit dishcloths? Then make a lapgan. Use the square patterns and join them together for a small lap blanket. Deb goes into detail at the end of the book about how she uses her squares to make lapgans for the Ronald McDonald House. Deb has taken a century-old tradition of making hand-knit dishcloths and makes them fresh and modern. Although the best fiber for dishcloths is cotton, Deb takes a moment in this book to talk about the properties of wool, because that's what she used for the lapgan project. If you missed her first book, you should check that one out as well. It is called simply Dishcloth Diva. In that book, she goes into detail about the properties of cotton. Before doing this review, I wanted to knit multiple patterns from this book so I could provide more detail about the patterns. But I only found time to knit one, and it's the first pattern in the book, Lucille Ball. From the picture, the pattern looks to be quite complicated, but I found it to be very easy and quite relaxing to knit. I enjoyed the color change. It really kept my interest piqued. The pattern calls for a cotton rayon bamboo blend, but I used 100% mercerized cotton. The next pattern, Nellie, uses slip stitches to create a honeycomb effect. The pattern is a short 16 row repeat. Ellie May, which is the next pattern, is a very simple knit and purl pattern. You may need the directions to get the dishcloth started, but after that it should be clear sailing from there. Mildred is the next pattern and has a bit of a twist, but with only 12 row repeat it would still be a very simple pattern. Mildred is followed by Blanche, and if you are looking for a very simple dishcloth, this pattern, with its four row repeat, may be just what you're looking for. It's a simple pattern, but creates a fabulous texture. Opal might be one of the more complicated patterns in this book, but still only has a five row repeat. There is lots of texture, which should keep you excited to knit this pattern in one sitting. Pearl has a more open feel to the dishcloth. It doesn't appear to have as much texture as some of the other patterns in the book, but it looks to be a very simple and enjoyable knit. Virginia is another pattern that contains cables. This is a very elegant dishcloth pattern that you may find yourself wanting to knit again and again. Betty, like Ella May, is a very simple knit and purl stitch pattern. If you are looking for a break from a more complicated pattern such as Virginia, then pick up Betty and start knitting away. Olive is another pattern that I really wanted to knit before doing this review, and I just might have to knit it very soon. It is another pattern that has some great texture and a very short row repeat. The hazel pattern appears to have bobbles, but don't be scared, they're not bobbles. This pattern actually only has two rows that are repeated multiple times, so that is even less to remember. It is, has a great deep texture and would be perfect for scrubbing your dirty dishes. And if you're just not quite sure if you want to invest the time in making hand-knit dishcloths and you want a super simple pattern to get you started, then Gladys is the way to go. It is a simple knit on the bias pattern where you increase until you have the right number of stitches and then you decrease back down. If you are particular about your dishcloths being reversible, then try out the Helen pattern. It is completely reversible so your dishcloth will look the same on both sides. Deb also provides an option for a striped version. Ethel looks more like a woven dishcloth rather than a knitted dishcloth. The texture is created simply by moving the working yarn. And last but certainly not least is the Elizabeth pattern. At first glance, this pattern appears to be mitered squares, but they are really just a combination of knits and pearls. The pattern is a bit longer than the other patterns in the book, but once you get the hang of it, you, it should flow pretty easily. There are a total of 15 patterns in this book that will keep you knitting dishcloths for quite some time. This book is available for purchase on the Cooperative Press website. It is available in 
PDF format only or PDF and print format. The PDF version is $9.95 and the PDF and print version is $15.95. If you would like a chance to win a copy of this fabulous book of dish gloss, then go to the thread on the Ravelry group and let me know which pattern you like the most and why. As always, thanks for joining me, and I hope you enjoyed the show. Please feel free to contact me with your comments or suggestions, as I am always trying to improve the show. You can find me on Ravelry, Instagram, and YouTube as Blooming Knitter. You can also find me on Plurk, Twitter, and Pinterest as Blooming Knitter, but I don't frequent those sites as often. I post show updates on Twitter and Facebook, and sometimes to Google Plus and Plurk. I am Miss Aerobics on MyFitnessPal and Fitbit. You can always find all the old episodes as well as links to the tutorials on the blog at www.knittingblooms.com. And you can also follow the show on Facebook. You can email me at knittingblooms at gmail.com and show notes can be found at knittingblooms.com.